Zach Galifianakis in his opening Saturday Night Live monologue from 2010, joking about a real-life sexual predator case, because then and even now, high school boys as victims of female teachers aren't seen in the same way as high school girls victimized by male teachers. And I know this isn't a popular position to take in the woke world we live in, but I'm going to say it. I think there's a difference between a 16-year-old boy having sex with his 30-year-old female teacher and a 16-year-old girl having sex with her 30-year-old male teacher. They are both wrong and criminal and should be punished. Let me be really clear about that. But I believe it is much more important for the criminal law to send a message to the male teacher perps than the females for a few reasons. First, it's the male teachers who are still the vast majority of those committing the crime. I hope there's a deterrent effect in tough sentencing. Second, it seems to me that the male teachers are often more predatory than female teachers who are often more troubled. I understand that'll be viewed as sexist by some, but I've covered a lot of these cases, and that is what I've seen. Third, in a number of these cases involving boys, the female teachers say the teen boys initiated crossing the line, which is far more rare amongst the girls. And finally, whether we like it or not, the social stigma for a teen girl is generally going to be worse than for the boys. It shouldn't be that way, but it generally is. Now, I am not talking about, say, 12 or 13-year-olds of either gender. That, to me, is equally horrific. But 16 or 17 or 18-year-olds, it's not just quite the same. Joining us to tell me why I have this all wrong is author of Princess Recovery and noted child psychologist, Dr. Jeff Jennifer Hartstein. Welcome to the show. Appreciate you coming Thank on. Thank you for having me. All right, so what am I getting wrong? <sighs> You're getting some of it right and some of it wrong. So we do treat them very differently. We treat female perpetrators differently than male perpetrators for one of the reasons you point out, which the boy-girl dynamic is very different. Very often, the teachers are younger when it comes to being a perpetrator with a boy, and the teachers are older when it comes to being a perpetrator with a girl. So that power differential seems very different. A 25-year-old teacher and a 17-year-old boy, not quite as scandalous, it seems, especially in the minds of the teenagers, right. than it is when it's a 40-year-old teacher and a 16-year-old girl, right? So we know that that's happening. But the fact is, is that the trauma that's left behind, regardless of age, because there is a power differential, because there's a teacher and a student, is the same across the board. And we see that there are problems with emotional development, physical development, academic development, all of those pieces. So that happens regardless of gender and regardless of who the perpetrator is. But how do you know the trauma is the same? Meaning, I'll, I'll grant you mm -hmm. that there is likely trauma in both cases, right? And I can tell you the parents of either ones are going to be very upset. Sure. I don't believe, though, that the trauma is the same. Meaning, and I don't know this, <laughs> I, right? I don't have any data okay. to, to back up what I'm saying. Sure. But I don't believe, because I do know, personally, some men, who now men, mm -hmm. who were boys at the time, who had sex with female teachers, and they recall it fondly. Sure. Right? Um, and I don't know of any women Right. who were girls where that happened. Right. And so it would seem to me that the trauma is different. So trauma, or at least can be. It can be. And trauma is different for anybody anyway, right? So I think some of it is also, we hear the stories of the male to female perpetrator. For a male, male teacher older usually starts grooming a female student at a much younger age. Right. So much more impressionable, much more... In, predatory. Well, but much more predatory point, right? influence. Well, yes, and so, but, but age of that is part of the problem. So if I am a girl being groomed at 14 versus right. a boy right. being groomed at 17, that in and of itself is going to make the trauma and the interpretation of it different, right? So age at which I am having but that let's, affair but let's, is let's play, let's play the same age. Sure. Let's assume it's the right, same so they're age. they're both 16. They're both 16. It's both 30 years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, is it sexist, do you think, for me to say that when I look at these cases... Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of these female teachers I feel sorry for. Yes. Um, it is sexist, you think? Yes, I okay. do think it is sexist. E I because I'm telling you from watching these cases and following them, mm -hmm. the men tend to be more predatory and the women 
right. tend to be more pathetic. And what's, that's, <laughs> no, and right, pathetic might be a tough word, but, socio, but what's the sociocultural implication, right? Are we putting women in a box of, this is how a woman is supposed to be. They're supposed to be neurotic and hysterical and pathetic, and they don't really understand. And we, in the research that's there, which, by the way, minimal, limited, we right. need I way was, more. I was shocked at how little research shocking there is. And that, that most of the statistics are from 16, 17, 18 yes. years ago. Like, yes. what are we missing here when we're seeing all these stories in the popular media, but we're not doing the research? That's a whole different conversation. But what we have to look at is, here we have these women who are portrayed as they don't understand it and they it's don't know what they're they getting into. It's not that they don't understand. I didn't say they don't understand. They're portrayed as if they don't understand. No, you know, my, my, my portraying them was really more that, you know, they were involved in bad relationships and they were about to get divorced mm -hmm. and they this and that and they say the boys made a pass at them and, you know. And the research and they, says that they, they think it's a real relationship right? and all that stuff. But, the, but let's look at the men. They're narcissists. They're they are often people hiding in plain sight, right? They're the people that are teachers of the year. And but aren't they more dangerous? The, the guys. I mean, that's my point. Is I, I guess I think these guy teachers are more dangerous. Than I these think women. that they're all equally dangerous, but I think we look at it differently because we look at men and women differently. I think there is still a sociocultural there implication is. of how we look at men versus how we look at women, which is going to make us believe that anyway. But I think that the fact that we're seeing more and more of these women pre preying on 12, 13, and 14 year old boys is equally as damaging as the men with but, the But girls. should it matter though that rightly or wrongly the social stigma still for the girls is tougher than for, not across the board, right. but can be tougher than for the boys? I mean, when we talk about the trauma that mm -hmm. you're talking about, the victim impact on the victims. Right. Shouldn't that matter? It absolutely should matter. But does that change the fact that someone in power did impact someone who doesn't have power? And then why aren't we prosecuting the same way? No, we can't. Well, we should. My point is, I think they should both be prosecuted. Right. I am no way. I'm not saying high fives. I'm not saying celebr but, celebrate. I'm not saying anything. Good. That. I'm glad for that. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, but, but I am saying that as I cover these cases mm -hmm. and I look at the sentences, I find myself sure. thinking that I kind of want the, a lot of these women, not all of them, right. but a lot of them, not to get that tough a sentence, particularly when the guy's 17. Right. And, and, I, and, and, and if that's, there is, that's where I think it gets a little bit, right? If, they, if she was 35 and he was 27, we wouldn't have a conversation like right. this, right? So, and that happens. So I think and if, if the kid is 13, as I said, or 12, right. or even 14, like, I don't care what gender. Right. That, that, to me, is all the same. Um, but it does seem that when you inch up in the years mm -hmm. and you're talking about the boys and some of these women are talking about how they, they initiated it, and I believe it, right. I think, wow, are you really going to put this woman in prison for up to 20 years for that? Well, but she still has a role as a teacher, right? What are we yes, teaching? How I, are yes. we creating the boundaries? Yes. How are we teaching that? How are we reinforcing that? So, yeah, I think that if there is a crime, we have to have the punishment. And it is so murky and confusing because you can have a 17-year-old that looks like they're 35 yeah. and a 35-year-old well, that looks like they're 18. One of the cases we're going to talk about later, believe it or not, Vili Falau, he was mm -hmm. 12. Yes. And he looked like he was 18. Yes. Um, so, anyway, uh, this is an interesting topic. Will you do some research? Uh, so, I, I mean, the fact there's no studies out there. Yeah, there are we, no. we looked for studies yeah. on this because I'm happy to be, to be proven wrong by the data. Yeah. Right? But there just isn't data, no data, so I'm kind of winging it. Mm -hmm. um, I went to have data to, com to argue with you. Yes, I couldn't yes. find it either, so I'm with you. <laughs> Dr. Hartstein, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Appreciate it. Come thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.